Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Welcome to Garden Grounds. I'm just going to get set up for a minute or two. We'll start at 11 o'clock. And this is my public Q&A that I do every second Thursday and fourth Thursday of the month at 11 a.m. So this is a public. So anybody can show up. If you are just rolling in for the first time, you do need to be a subscriber to ask questions. Um, otherwise, you can sit back, you know, listen to the chat. But everybody is welcome to ask questions. Ask questions about anything related to vegetable gardening. Today's light theme is on um, direct sowing cool weather crops. And I'll talk about that as we progress. But we're going to wait just another minute or two for everybody who wants to roll in to roll in. And I'm going to set up the chat here. So again, this is the public chat that I do every second Thursday on fourth Thursday of the month. If you like this format, I have a perk membership. That's private membership through YouTube. You go there, find the join button and you join and it's a fee per month. But I do four or five of these live Q and A's. It's a small group of 30 or 40 people. Stay on for about an hour, plenty of time to answer all your questions. Also do two live teaching events. I call it the live classroom twice a month. And then we also do a series called Grow As We Grow, where people that are PERC members can send in video questions, short tour of their garden. I put them all together and I do a premiere launch once, once a month of a series called Grow As We Grow, where you get to see my garden and the PERC members' gardens. But this again is the public event. If you are going to leave a question, good morning to everybody. If And you can see the people that have um, stars next to their name. They are PERC members. And you can ask them about what the PERC membership is like. So the key here is, um, and actually I can see your question, because so many people roll through here and the chat goes pretty quickly, just put question before your question so I can see it. If you notice that I miss it and I've gone to other questions, you're probably going to have to send it again because it's hard to track everything that's going on here. And of course, if you want to, to you know, um, you know, do whatever. Why did I forget what it's called? But if you want to do, you know, five minute, a five dollar donation or something that will send your question right to the top and I can see it. Otherwise, just type in question and we'll we'll start from there. So we are going to talk about um, direct sowing cool weather crops, but I'll get to that you know, after I answer a few questions. So let me go back here and find it. Lots of good morning, good mornings, good morning to everybody. Uh, Ashley, hi Gary, what temperature should we wait for when planting out peppers? Very good question, because there's two temperatures. There's temperatures of the soil, and then there's the ambient temperature, the surrounding temperature. You want the soil temperature to be, and that's the top two, four, six inches. That's where the root system is going. You really want that to be 60 70 degrees warmer is better as the season progresses peppers take off tomatoes take off because the root system is warming up but you really want it to be in the upper 60 70 degrees otherwise you can rush your pepper out the soil temperature stays around 40 or 50 and your pepper plant just sits there yes there's no frost in the air maybe the days are getting into the 60s or 70s but the nights are still getting cold into the 40s that soil temperature stays chilled and basically your pepper stays chilled. It'll just sit there. So you're really trying to time it for when that temperature is getting up again into the 60s or 70s. You don't need to use a thermometer or anything like that. You're looking for the nights to, you know, get maybe into the 50s, but the nights are staying in the 50s and 60s. The days are getting into the 70s. You're getting warm rains. That's all the signal that that soil is warming up. So when you're starting seeds indoors, you don't want to start your pepper plants, you know, 16 weeks before that soil temperature is right, or you could have these big plants to deal with. We'll be talking a little bit about timing um, today probably, but that's my answer, long-winded, but I think that's what most people don't understand. It's not the day temps, it's the soil temps that make a big difference for our warm weather crops. That's why when you put a tomato plant out early 
and maybe frost doesn't come and it doesn't damage it, but it gets purpley, it stays small, it's because it's just sitting out there shivering. So you want the warmer soil temperature. So again, make sure you put question, although I saw what about Bob's question. Going to plant apple trees in 65 gallon containers, perfect. Considering chives as companion plants, when to sow. So I would just start the chives indoors. They are a perennial herb. You can get them growing indoors. They're really indestructive. So just start them and grow them to as big as you want. And then when they're ready to go outside, they're good to go. They can also take a light frost so there's no rush, but you can certainly start the chives indoors, and that's what I recommend. Starting indoors, just to preface what we're going to be talking about, the only reason you start indoors is to get a jump on the season. If you live somewhere where, you know, the temperatures are great, direct sowing is probably the best way to go about it. But in Maryland, it's freezing April. It's freezing February. Any seeds I put out there are just going to sit. Just because you put a seed in the ground, and it says, you know, it takes 10 to 14 days to germinate. Again, with that cold soil temperature, it may take four, five, six weeks for that seed to germinate. So we start stuff indoors. They germinate at normal speed, you know, five to 14 days. They grow, we get a jump on the season, and then we move them out when it's the right time. And we get that growth we wouldn't normally have because January and February really shuts down most of the growing here in Maryland. But chives, you can definitely start now. Darlene, I did not get an email from your daughter. So this is for Grow As We Grow, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about. So I will check the spam, but um, see if she sent it and just email me again and I'll, I will check in, into it. All right, give me a sec here. Trisha. Hello, thanks for doing this. When's a good time to direct sow chard, chives, and some other summer crops like cucumbers, mint, and sunflowers? So chives you can put in now. Chard you can put in now. They can take a, a frost. They, they'll germinate quicker when the nights are staying in the 40s and 50s. So they don't mind the temperatures being the soil temperatures being like 40 or 50 degrees. Your summer crops, um, like cucumber and sunflowers, like that warmer temperature. And I'm giving you numbers. It's hard to say exactly what the soil temperature should be, but it should be on the warmer side, 50, 60 degrees for the warm weather crops. Mint you can put in now. The seeds are fine and they don't mind the cold. They're pretty indestructible too. So chives, chard, and mint can go in the ground um, as soon as you can really work it. They're going to take longer to germinate. That's why I start mint indoors, chives indoors, and chard indoors, just to get them up and going. Cool weather crops. And then the cucumbers and sunflowers need warmer weather and warmer soil. Um, Croc... Are you able to share pictures you plant with? No. So in the PERC membership, we communicate through the community on my YouTube channel. However, I have a Facebook group. It's called the Rusted Garden Homestead um, PERC members. And you guys are welcome to sign up too. If you go to Facebook and just find the Rusted Garden Homestead, um, answer a few questions and I'll let you in. You can share pictures there. Uh, also, if you have an issue and you have a picture or a problem, uh, if you have a problem, you want to send me a picture, you can send it to my email and I do check it out that way. Girl foliage. Is it safe to use worm tea indoors? My tomato and pepper seedlings are getting pale, even though you use a water soluble tomato fertilizer, 131 with every other watering. So first thing I would do um, is increase the fertilizing, give them a little bit more. Um, especially if they look pale. You also want to make sure you're not overfeeding, which I don't think you are. You could use worm tea, but I don't think it's going to do that much for you. And anytime you create something with products from outside and you bring it inside, there's a risk of bringing in fungus and spores and stuff that's just going to kind of take over because 
in your under your grow lights in a nice place like you know your house there's no nature to really counterbalance the bad stuff you don't want growing so sometimes you get an outbreak of issues but i feel like with a 131 you know you could give them a little bit more and see if that works So uh, Frederick, how many cucumber seeds per plant in a container? And again, I'm gonna probably miss it if you don't put question in front of there. So that really depends on the size of the container. Um, I recommend a 20 gallon container. Um, it's hard to say what that is, but about 20 gallons. And I would only put two cucumber plants in there. The more plants you pack in, they're gonna all germinate and look great. But when they get the full size, massive root systems, heat of the summer, they're going to suck the moisture out like that. And if you just go one day of the root systems totally drying out, it damages your plant. So I would only put two in a 20 gallon container at most. Gina 77, does neem oil expire? The answer is I don't know. I don't think that it does if you keep it cool. Neem oil is a brown liquid that will kind of get tan looking and thick and it looks like you can't use it. Just go ahead and put it into some warm tap water. It kind of melts and you can use it. I haven't really kept it past two years or let's just say one season, three seasons. It's worked. For three seasons so probably it does have an expiration date but I know that it's good for at least two full years maybe that you know third year of you know spraying and using it all right one more question um, a rodent took a hyacinth bulb from my pot I put cayenne pepper on top with plastic forks facing up seems to work any other suggestions um, no, just for those of you that have squirrels and other rodents that dig up stuff, squirrels are a big pain in my area. <laughs> Putting forks upside down puts the tines up. So if they're digging, they are getting, you know, poked on that. Hot pepper or sprays do work. I find if you get chicken wire, so I do have a suggestion, chicken wire that has the bigger holes like that. And you kind of just make a cap to go on your containers. Um, you know, squirrels, some squirrels are smarter, they can knock it off. But otherwise, you just put a nice cap on it of a thicker chicken wire or chicken wire with bigger holes so that the hyacinth, hyacinth yeah, hyacinth <laughs> and other plants can grow through that. You don't want to get the smaller chicken wire because it can impede the growth of the plants. But that can make a big difference too. Favorite marigold or French marigolds, the older version with the actual scent. Um, I like so many different kind, but usually I plant marigolds to have more of an odor, more of a scent to help deter other plants. So let's just talk real quick. So we were talking about seed starting cool weather crops indoors. And you do that really based on how much space you have. Thank you, Spanky. I'll get to your question in a second. You do that really based on your growing season. So sometimes getting like broccoli, kale, cauliflower, Brussels, um, even lettuce and spinach started indoors gives you a jump on the season. And they all do great seed starts. Today, we're talking about things that I would only direct seed. And the first thing Um, the first thing to keep in mind is that the cool weather crops like the, the, the cooler temperature. So bok choy and pak choy, Chinese cabbages or Chinese cabbages as whole, I would direct seed them. They germinate even better at lower soil temperatures. And if you seed start them indoors, they get up to a great jump. Because it's warm inside, they get tall and lanky. But more importantly, they feel the warmth of 70 degree house, the lights, and they actually grow, but then they flower. Like they're already trying to go to seed. 
the bok choy, the pak choy, the Asian cabbages are really best suited to be direct sown because they need that slow, cold temperature to just develop into this nice, you know, loose head of cabbage and leafy cabbage. So bok choy and pak choy. Radishes, here's an example. So it's also based on how much work is it? Like I can plant, you know, 100 radishes in like 10 minutes. You know, you prep the soil, put finger holes in, drop in the seeds, cover it over, you're good to go. They like the 40, 50 degree temperature too. They germinate really quickly. The days are warming up to the 60s or 70s. They're gonna germinate in anywhere from five to 10 days. So here's an experiment. These are radishes that were put in on February 29th and it's been about 30 days. If, let me take one out. Now they grow great indoors. But again, it's too warm for them. Well, a little easier said than done here. So right here, where you see, let's see, all this red, that's supposed to be a radish bulb. The, these are crimson red. And all I have are these, you know, tall, lanky radishes that fell over. You know, nice greens, you can eat them. These have been in too long. These have been in for four weeks. There's no radish bulb for them. Once your radishes are growing outside, the bulb should start pretty quickly or you're just gonna get a bunch of greens. More importantly, this flat is eight to 10 days old. And you can see how they're extra tall. Like the earth level should be right here, just should be the green coming out. And this stem should be where the radish is gonna form, but it's just tall and you can see all the red. Now, maybe, sure, you, you wanna do this, but then you have to pop out 72 cells of the radish after 10 days, get them into the ground, make bigger holes, and it's just a lot of work. Direct seed your radishes, so start now. Maybe it's too cold, you make a note. You, they go in 328, they take 14 days to germinate, okay. Two weeks from now, you put in some more. They take five days to germinate. You can kind of work out what's the best time to put your radishes in. And then I do recommend direct seeding every two weeks after the first batch germinates. Why? If you put in 500 radishes now, you're gonna have to eat 500 radishes over a week's time. If you put in 25, they germinate. Two weeks later, another 25, you get radishes over the span of a, of a month. And it's a little bit more enjoyable that way, unless you want 500 radishes. So radishes I would direct seed, carrots I would direct seed also because you can do exactly what I showed you here, except the radishes send a long taproot down. And in these containers, they're gonna get all twisted and curled. You put them outside, you have to take them individually and go ahead and put them in the ground. Sometimes now, and then we'll get back to the questions and we'll get back to uh, Spanky. You might see like a container this is just random stuff growing here. But you could go to like your big box store and you see a container and they've got like 50 radishes in here or, you know, 50 carrots all cramped together. You might as well just buy a pack of seeds for two bucks instead of paying six bucks for something like that. When you start trying to pull them apart, yeah, it's possible I can do it, but it's going to take you a long time. Just put the carrot seeds in. Direct sow them. Good to go. So we got carrots, radishes, bok choy, pak choy. So the question is, where exactly do you find the option to join perk memberships? I can't find it for the life of me. So you're not the only person. YouTube does not make it easy. If you go to your PC, laptop, or an iPad, it's easier to find it. And maybe some of the people in the group can help you. But it just, it's right on the screen and it usually just says join. If you're trying to do it from your phone, it's harder to find, but you're looking for the join button. Um, you know, I appreciate you putting your question up top. I wish I had a better answer. If you want to email me, you can email me at therustedgarden at gmail.com. Just tell me who you are and I'll try and help you that way. Um, and let me know what device you're using and we'll see if we can figure it out. And I, you would think it would be easy. Like every device 
it just says join and then you would go ahead and do that but it, it, it is not easy so it's not you Tina my temperature at night is still in the 20s and 30s and I haven't even been able to harden off my onion onions yet what should I do um you can't do anything Tina I mean if you have crops you, and this is where you want to you know keep notes and figure out the dates when you start stuff so next year you'll probably have to shift stuff a little bit onions are pretty indestructible so meaning you know you can you're probably doing the bunching onion style you can start putting them out and letting them get hardened off now and just bring them back inside so when the temperatures do become right it's good to go temperatures in the 20s and, and low 30s your ground is still going to be freezing so i wouldn't put them out yet but there's not much you can do if you have other crops you can and they're getting too big again they probably would start a little bit too early for your temperatures you could pot them up but i'm not sure what else could be done easy lifestyle fruit trees home depot shipped me a free tree with no bud sites should i top it to produce figure and bud sites thank you so depending on the fruit tree some create spurs some produce on the flowers and the buds depends if it's a pit you know like peach um, nectarine plum or if it's a poem if i got that right p-o-m-e apple because it's the first year and i am not a master of pruning you can trim the main branches you can open up the center you want space in there and let it go because even if it produced a lot of apples or fruit this year you have to remove some of them until the plant is established a mistake people make is they put in that new tree it's a fairly good size produces tons of fruit but those fruit take the energy out of the plant the roots aren't really established and next year sometimes the plant doesn't establish so I would go ahead and just lightly trim it and see how it goes. I mean, you're not going to hurt it. I mean, you know, that will take right the energy back into there and, and see what the tree does. So I want to welcome Tucci3 with the blue star. So I don't know if you've just joined, but welcome and thanks for joining the perk memberships. And the perk memberships are just nice because it's a limited group. Um, we meet really regularly. And if you're just getting started with garden, it's just kind of ongoing chat. The people that are perk members are <laughs> certainly smart. I don't want it to sound that way, but they're smart with garden advice. So it's not just me giving you advice. Everybody in there helps each other out. We're also doing an event where we're growing five crops together. We just pick the crops and you pick, you know, a couple that you want to grow. And then we'll be, you know, talking about them over the year. L. Hicks, I have two fig cuttings. One has a few roots. When should I add to a pot of soil? There are four roots currently. So I take it that you're doing your cuttings maybe in water. And if you are, you just want to change the water regularly. And I would wait for a lot more roots um, it probably would survive if you did it now you know and then you start maybe like with just a basic you know seed starting mix or something that's kind of loose maybe more peat based um, but I would wait a little bit longer I mean if it's growing and it looks good there's no rush to move it out Darlene it may be under a different uh, heading. I'm not grow as we grow. So I, I will check. I, I think that's what you're referencing. I'll look for it. Jay, can you tell me how to get rid of tip fern? It's only on the tips of my lettuce and how to stop bolting. I have an indoor garden, not an outdoor garden. So tip fern happens for two reasons. It's over fertilizing and the fertilizer goes out to the tips and burns it. It's probably not that. It can just be the heat from the lights will burn the tips. 
you cannot stop bolting and that's the issue like the bok choy I was talking about at 70 degrees the roots are always warm 24 7 and it gets a signal to create flowers bolting means it wants to create flowers then seed pods and reproduce so lettuce that is bolting indoors is bolting because of the temperatures and unless you can change where it's growing and make it cooler it's probably going to bolt so you might have to start looking for varieties that bolt less sorry i wish i could answer that better but bolting is based on warmth warmth of the roots and warmth of the ambient temperature they kind of go together but you know what i mean georgia in north texas old zone seven i'm at 70 to 80 degrees how long to harden off tomatoes to plant outside so that just varies greatly i always tell people a week you know 15 or 20 minutes the first day and increase over time if you don't harden off a plant it's and you've, they've been growing inside you put them outside the uv ray of the sun of the sun yet yeah, kills them they're not used to it so like if you have a really cloudy day they can stay out longer if you have clouds and rain they can stay out on the edge they can stay out longer but you really want to do it slowly if it's not fully cloudy and that means the sun is poking out treat it as a full sunny day and you start with 15 20 minutes maybe 30 minutes and then you increase it a little bit each day i'm running uh victoria i'm running out of room pop-up greenhouse in the pop in the pop-up greenhouse can i put my herbs and basil inside with other temps let me reread that i'm running out of room pop-up greenhouse can i put my herbs and basil inside with outdoor temps 70 to 34 degrees only about two to three hours at 30 at night will it kill them your herbs if they're oregano thyme chives sage lavender rosemary they can handle the cold it's not going to kill them basil does not like the cold 30s and 40s is too cold for basil so i would not put that out if it's a perennial herb they could go out frank sinatra i'm going to have some extra strawberry plants next month and we'll be putting them in 10 gallon grow bags how many would you suggest I put per grow bag? I was thinking two. So a 10 gallon grow bag is pretty good. Strawberries are gonna send out runners. You could definitely, in a 10, they're like 12 inches across. You could definitely put in three in a triangle. But to be honest with you, I would put in five. I would tuck four towards the corners, make a square and one right in the center. I tend to overplant, but I think three to five would fit in there nicely. Keep them watered, keep them fed. They're going to fill up the whole container. They're going to send out runners. You can save those, use those later. But two um, seems a little, you know, thin. So I think you could do more. All right, I'll take Bruce's question and then we'll talk a little bit more about the um, direct sowing. Can I harden off my indoor seedlings in a greenhouse? Then after a week or so, take them. You can, some greenhouses, the glass or the plastic is coated with a UV protectant. So it does diminish the UV rays. If you know that the whole sun's getting in and UV rays are coming in, you can go ahead and do that. All right, so let's see where I'm at. All right, just getting caught up. So next group that I like to direct. So when, and then you can, and it all depends really on your space. Like if you don't have the greenhouse or you don't have a lot of space indoors, you can go ahead and do direct sow spinach and lettuce. They grow really well. A trick you can do because lettuce is nicely put in here. Like, you know, two lettuce seeds in each of these or you know radish or i'm sorry spinach seeds just keep these indoors until they germinate 
and then you can take a plug and put it out there. That's not really direct sowing, but it's not keeping these indoors for four weeks till the lettuce gets really big. You're just letting it germinate inside where it's warm, gives it a little bit of a jump, and then you can go ahead and put them outside. But you can direct sow lettuce, you can direct sow spinach. I do recommend that. It's always good to experiment, get them out there, see how they go. A lot of times direct sown crops do a little bit better because they establish really nice roots and then the green takes off, the greenery takes off and they do really well. So we've got spinach, lettuce, pak choy, bok choy, Chinese cabbage, radishes and carrots and then peas. I've done plenty of videos where I've started peas indoors. That would be to get a jump. Maybe you have a prolonged period where the temperatures are just staying 30, 40 at night. You know, they warm up during the day, but those temperatures tend to maybe uh, rot or mold pea seeds. Maybe you start them indoors, but they're just beautiful to just direct sow about an inch deep, one inch apart, two inches apart, get them going. And then right down when you put them out there and you can kind of time and see you know how quickly they germinate in cold ground 40 to 50 degrees they should germinate really 10 to 14 days in colder ground upper 30s and 40s they could take up to 21 days if the temperatures at night are in the 50s they're going to germinate really quickly they're going to germinate probably in under 10 days question if you have tiny swiss chard seedlings that only have one set of true leaves, but the night temperatures are okay for sending them outside, is it safe to do so? Yeah, so they're smaller. You know, if you, if you take seeds, like these have been growing too long. They have no protection to the UV ray of the sun. Put them outside, the sun's gonna bleach them. It's probably gonna kill them off. These just germinated, so they don't know they're germinating indoors. So these first leaves are do have protection to the UV ray of the sun. So if you put your Swiss chart out or you put your plants out when they're small, they don't even need a lot of hardening off because they're already adapted to thinking they're going to be outside, knowing that the sun's going to hit them. So that's a good way sometimes. Like I will maybe take my plants out sometimes when they're this big and give them like 30 minutes of sun. A couple days later, they go outside again and I harden my plants off as they're growing rather than waiting till the end. But you could go ahead and put your Swiss chart out. You just don't want them to get shocked with the temperature. So maybe put them out during the day to start, let them get used to the fluctuation, then bring them back inside. And then, you know, in a couple of days, they should be fine to be outside over the night through the night. Jose, my soil seems to crust up on the top after a few waterings. Am I missing more compost to prevent this? Trying to let sun warm up the soil, which is why I have not mulched in the beds. So I take you to talking about outside soil. I have a lot of clay. So even with lots of organic matter for the first several years, when it dries, it cracks and it looks crusty and it could just be, you know, the content of your soil. Um, more compost, more organic matter holds water better. And then when everything dries, it doesn't kind of shrink and get crusty. I would, you know, just build it slowly over time. I wouldn't worry too much about it. But the more organic matter you add in, the less it's going to crust and crack. Julie, um, I ordered bare root strawberries to plant in mid-April, but they came on Monday. Oh, I hope you get through the spine surgery okay. So I can't plant for a while. Are they lost cause? How do I care for them? Hmm. So it's going to be tricky. You don't want them to rot. So they usually come wrapped in paper towel or something like that. Let's just say they come wrapped in paper or paper towel. You want the green to stay out here in the sunlight and be dry. And then the crown goes in here. The roots come into here. You can hold them longer by, you know, just changing the wrapping around them, keeping it moist and seeing how they go. Sometimes people just, you know, put them into a towel, roll them all up. The green is up top, put them into a container, put some, you know, 
soil around them, moisten it, and just let them sit outside. They will absorb the sunlight, they'll stay cool, the roots will be okay, and with the microbes in there, there's less, like if you're just doing this indoors in water, all kinds of stuff forms and they can, you know, have problems. But in soil, they can do okay. But you do have options, you can kind of prolong it. Just if you're keeping them inside and you're keeping them wrapped, just change the wrapping um, every couple of days. You know, that should work. Okay, I water from the bottom, but I notice that sometimes with small cells, the water stops wicking up to the top. And that's after 30 minutes. So sometimes the containers are curved, so the outer cells don't wick up water, or there's an air pocket in your cell. I mean, all you can really do there is, you know, do the 30 minutes, most of the cells fill up, and then I just have a small container with a nice easy pour, and I just spot water the ones that, you know, um, don't, you know, hydrate the right way. Um, Nina, it seems like my cool weather crops survived the recent snow, but should I be worried about the weight of the snow crushing the plants? No. Snow is actually insulating and it's light and they should be okay. Just looking for questions. Apollos, what trellis system would you recommend for cucumbers and do you recommend they get full sun? I live in Jamaica. So cucumbers do want full sun, but when you're getting into temperatures in the upper 90s, midsummer, it kind of burns them out. So I use shade cloth here in Maryland, you know, mid-July sometimes to cool down my cucumber plants, but they do want full sun. Um, the trellising can really be anything. Um, we have cattle panel that's really thick. I use concrete mesh, which is a good um, thickness. You want something that you can get a good height, I think of four or five feet, so it grows up there. I use um, closet shelving racks for some of my cucumbers and trellis up that. But you want something that's pretty strong because the plants can get heavy with the cucumbers on there. Josh, recommendations on what to plant in a bed that only gets two to three hours of direct light. Also downside of the house. Um, I don't know, let's throw that out to everybody. Maybe they can answer you. Two to three hours is not a lot of light. There's not many vegetables you can grow. Um, you can try, but they, they end up looking like these guys. You know, they don't have enough light, so they're stretching and they're trying to reach the light. Um, you could, Always try things like garlic. You're not gonna get a bulb, but you can eat the greenery. You can try herbs like chives. Sometimes they do better, um, oregano thyme, but they most plants really want that we're gonna eat or use for culinary purposes, a good six hours of direct light. Inside of something like that, you're switching over to uh, ferns and other things that like the shade, but there's nothing great edible wise you know, standard edible wise that will grow in two or three hours. All right, a lot of questions are going through. If you're not putting question in front, I'm probably missing your question. Tina, my onions are already small bulbs, so I may have to pot them up. How did you experiment work last year when you put your onion seeds in Tupperware containers last year? So if they're bulbing up, you know, they're, they're, they're thinking they're a little bit older. Um, I would try and get them outside now, even though the temperatures may not be right, or try and start letting them see the sun outside and get less sun. Our grow lights tend to stay on longer. Onions bulb up based on the hours of sunlight, so they're probably getting confused with how long the grow lights are on. So maybe keep them outside, maybe near the house where it's warmer. Um, 
onions that I've grown in Tupperware containers and put outside to grow in space, they did great. I have also grown a bunch of onions and I've left them in a Tupperware container and you end up with onions like about this big really packed together. Um, I mean, it's a cool experiment, but you won't get big onions. I have cattle panel trellis. So which vegetables would you recommend I grow? Cattle panel can handle anything, to be honest with you. You can grow anything on there. It's solid. It's strong. Um, you can even grow pumpkins and melons up it. They're going to hold the vine. You do have to support the bigger fruits, of course, and then tie it to the cattle panel, like in a sack or a sling, because the fruit gets hold heavier, it's going to pull off the vine. But cattle panel can hold anything. Self-pollinating cucumbers. Um, I like them. I've not grown them outside. I've grown them when I've been at a farm that I volunteer at. I think they're great. They're really used for growing indoors um, because you don't have any pollinators. So they work great for that. But I like the standard National Pickling, Straight 8, Market More, and this year as part of the Perk memberships as a group are growing the um, Armenian cucumbers. Uh, cheers, root on selling plants. I know some of you are, you know, growing plants to sell. It's a great way to bring in extra money. So Victoria, good question. Can I direct sow celery? You can, in theory. It's very slow growing. So I start mine. Um, I started mine back in January, and I got it to about this height, and now I put it outside. I like to grow it inside. It seems to grow quicker. You can direct sow anything, but it can take a long time to germinate. Celery also kind of changes its structure when it starts getting hot. Um, it gets a little more um, fibrous, a little more bitter from the direct sun and the heat. So it's really about trying to time it so it has a longer, cooler period to grow and develop. Just on the side note, I don't recommend, I like I don't like Bonnie plants. Some of you may know that. They charge too much, the company got sold, whatever. But they are now selling six packs. And I did notice a six pack and it was celery and they're a little expensive, they're $6.98. Sometimes you can find six packs of celery other places. That's not so bad because celery can take a long time to grow. But you could direct sow them you know, see how it goes. All right, we'll come back to that question. So for direct seeding again, I just want to, where are we at? Oh, we're almost done. So usually I stay on about 45 minutes. I'll stay on for, I'll stay on for an hour for today. But the perk memberships, we go about an hour or longer if needed. The public live, which are every Thursday, every second Thursday, every fourth Thursday, 11 o'clock, it's usually 11.45, um, but there's lots of good questions. So the reason that you're direct sowing is one, the seeds are more work to start indoors, you know, or the seeds um, need to go down into the earth. They do better that way. The other one that is a 50-50 are beets. Beets I've started in trays and they end up looking really lanky like this, um, but I put them outside. They correct easy, the beet forms, and it's a way to get a jump on the season. However, I've direct sown all of my beets this year, um, like two weeks ago. They are slow to germinate, but as soon as all the temperatures correct, the beets take off and they do well. So beets are one that I probably do recommend direct sowing, you know, but you, you can do both. It's always a question of the amount of work. Like I just you know, I don't go back to the radishes. Like these are probably not going to form bulbs. I'm going to put them outside. You have to start taking care of these for, you know, 10 to 21 days. Then you're trying to put them outside. They're too lanky. The way the bulb is formed is this long, you know, red stem, which should be around really small. It should be starting when the plants are small like that. They're just growing. They're growing too fast in the warmth of the house. You want the cool weather for a lot of your cool weather crops to slow everything down 
and then just slowly they form beautiful leaves or beautiful crowns. All right, so let's get to more questions. Spanky, when lettuce gets really healthy looking inside, but it's only in the 20s at night, should I move them to a sunny reno window? So you've, you've just started your stuff early. So the good news is you get it growing. I probably would reseed spinach and lettuce now. Um, a trick that you can do is if they're in flats, you know, you for, for those cool crops, like if this was all lettuce, I would take this outside during the day now. Put it out at like 9 a.m. if you're able to, you know, let it sit, bring it in at night when it gets to freezing. And what it does, or move it, you know, if it's not going to be freezing and it's going to be in your 30s, you could leave it out there. You're just kind of slowing the whole process down. But with four weeks, six weeks indoors, sometimes the heat is too much. Um, if you put them to a sunny window, sometimes it's cooler there and that helps. You could give that a try. But they're probably... You know, I don't think they're necessarily, you're not saying they're getting ready to bolt. Um, but a cooler part of your house would be great. And because they are bigger, they can take, they can survive on just light from a window. Like when you're first getting seeds started, you want them to germinate into like shop lights that are like above here and just giving them intense light. Once they're growing for several weeks, they're bigger, they can survive more right at a sunny windowsill to answer your question better. If you have a lot of white fuzz on top of your tomato plants, that is a fungus. Um, doesn't mean it's bad, but I would check out my videos on making hydrogen peroxide spray and spraying it, or try when it's like 40 or 50 out, it's sunny, just put it out there in the sun and let the UV rays hit it for 20 minutes or so. That will help kill off a lot of molds and fungus. My onion seed casing stayed stuck on the tips i took them off the tips are that's fine so the tips that hold the onion or the tips that may have the shell and the casing of the seed they're going to fade off and die anyway those are the first leaves you can take off the shell you could leave it on there it's the leaves that come after that are, that are important nothing bad's going to going to happen How do you get bunching onions to thicken up after eight weeks? Mine are still thinner. Strands of floss, the same with my chives. Um, sometimes the warmth, if they're being started in, indoors, does that. Sometimes a fan blowing on them helps. Sometimes moving them helps thicken them up. Uh, but I don't know of a way to thicken them up quickly. If they're outside... You know, that's just going to happen as everything adjusts temperatures and sun and all that, and they'll, they'll take care of themselves. So, and then, Kristen, I saw that you said onions. Even though it's, the, the leaves are different for onions, um, I think they're like a monocot or something, Anyway, that first stem, it can be beat up. It can, you know, turn brown. It can turn yellow. More onion leaves are going to come up. It can be that they're close to the lights. You could raise the lights a little bit. Um, but for indoor onions, I'd trim off half of it anyway, half of the green growth when they're going to go outside. So you're not really worried about that. So it can be beat up and it, they're going to be okay. The volume is up. I'm sorry if you can't hear me. Um, I'll check on things later. Um, all right, so we've got about 10 minutes left. So eaglet, only way to keep rabbits away is to have a fence or you can get chicken wire with the smaller holes and I just, you know, stretch it out crunch it up so that it puffs up a little bit and then I just lay it on my onions or on my radishes because the chicken wire puffs up radishes aren't you know tons of leaves 
rabbits don't want to walk on that. They don't want to get their feet caught in the holes. And I just kind of pick up the chicken wire when I want to harvest a radish and it works out. I found azalea tone on sale, 434, 5% sulfur. Can I use this in grow bags with tomatoes or other veggies? Wondering if the sulfur would be. So it's possible that the sulfur increases the acidity. That's great to use around your blueberry plants that want more acidity. The thing that you can do is go ahead and use that, especially if it was on sale. And then maybe just buy a bag of garden lime, throw some lime in there. That will neutralize any issue. Probably wouldn't be an issue anyway. But I understand what you're saying, and garden lime will increase the pH, while sulfur decreases the pH, and they'll kind of neutralize each other. And you don't need a lot of lime, just a sprinkle in there. Uh, Victoria, what we're planting is a group. It should be in the community um, on my YouTube page. And if you can't find it, again, send me an email. Um, off the top of my head, let me see if I can do it. Well, I know it's Armenian cucumber. It's a mammoth sunflower. It's a burgundy green bean. Maybe a red beef steak. I can't remember what the tomato is. And I forget the fourth one. I've used biochar before and I haven't found it really did much either way so biochar is basically carbon i like making it like i make biochar in the fireplace it's a cool process but because i use so much compost there's a lot of organic matter the biochar doesn't really seem to do anything biochar will pull in nutrients you know uh, hold moisture and stuff like that it gives back to the plants over time but i didn't find it to be anything special that made anything bigger or better Jess, Jesse, I'm in zone 7B, North Carolina. I've tried to grow broccoli in the fall and early spring. It always gets off to a great start and then the heads bolt. So that's what happens to me early spring into summer here in Maryland. And we're probably similar. In the fall, I mean, it should be going into cooler temperatures and then you get a nice head of broccoli because it, the soil is cooling down. The only other thing that you can do is use a shade cloth to keep things even cooler. Like that's where I'm growing my broccoli this year. Every spring now I started over a rainbow piece of cattle panel. It's growing. I'm going to put the shade cloth over it, you know, probably towards the end of April. That cools the soil, cools the roots, and I get better heads of broccoli before it bolts. And I just want to say, like, I'm glad so many people are coming through. Hello to everybody. I really enjoy doing this. We're going to finish up in eight minutes. Again, the public Q&As every second and fourth Thursday, 11 a.m. I usually stay on for 45 minutes have a light subject uh, and it is raining outside so I've got a little bit extra time today so we're gonna stay on until 12 eight more minutes uh, what fertilizer always early should I use on my potatoes that are in grow bags so there's so many choices and I'm assuming that they're already in the grow bags I like agro thrive they have a higher phosphorus and potassium than fish emulsion. I'm affiliated with them. You can find them in any of my video descriptions. But I would use their brand of water soluble that's higher in the P and the K and then just water it into your, your grow bags that way. Um, otherwise, some fish emulsions like a 511 NP and K, and that will be okay. But it's higher in nitrogen. You just want more potassium and phosphorus. They really like potassium. They feed or they develop more with potassium as one of, what do I want to say? Of the three elements, potassium is really important because potassium really takes care of the entire potato in that case. 
French. I planted my onion seeds last week in January. I planted my onion seeds the last week of January. My overnight temperatures are above 30 now. How big do my onions need to be before I can get them into the raised bed? January, February, March, you're at eight weeks. I would probably, you know, be thinking about now. They can be really thin. I mean, they just have to survive. You know, I mean, they're okay to go out now. I might just wait another 10 days or so, maybe trim them. Hopefully they get a little bit more stocky, but temperatures get, you know, out of frost. You just don't want to put a thin or a small onion seedling out there. The frost comes, it's a little harder than you thought, and it damages the plant. They can take a frost. It depends on how many hours is it, it is at night and other factors. But I really think you're a good seven, you're good to go, but another seven to 10 days would help. My onion seedlings are not sprouting after two weeks. I would try new seeds now. Onions should be up between seven and 10 days. If where you're trying to sprout them is particularly cold, like under 60 degrees, it might be taking longer. But if you're at 60, you know, five, degree temps or more, I would replant them. And sometimes onion seeds just dry out and they're not viable. We're going to figure out, Judy, how to show off the plants that we're growing together. And we'll probably, it would make sense that we do a grow as we grow and we highlight some of the plants that we grew, that we're growing as a group. All right, putting an egg or fish in a tomato hole. I've done a video on that. It does make a difference. It just becomes an organic fertilizer. You want to make sure you put it down a good 12 inches and you let the roots grow into there. If you put it too close to the surface, it'll bring animals in. Um, but you're basically just putting in organic matter. It rots, worms eat it, it breaks down, it feeds the plant. I also now break the egg. If you put an egg full shell, it can stay like that for a long time. Break it. All right, we got to finish up in four minutes. Catherine, I now live in a town and have to rely on container gardening. Is it better to plant onion sets or plant or plants in order to get bulbs? Do sets only produce scallions? I live in Northeast Pennsylvania. So you can buy onion sets, which is a sack of onions, and they're just little bulbs. Oh, and for a lot of people, you put, plant them, they sprout, and they, you do get onions. Sometimes the onions think they're second year because they're biennial. A second year onion is going to put up a flower stalk, but the sets do work. What I think works best is the bunches. That's either starting indoors and you grow a bunch and then you thin them out and you plant them or like at Home Depot. Um, and I just did a video on it. If you look at my onion video, you'll see what I mean by onion bunches. Those just about every time turn into nice onions and I would do those and they're called onion bunches just want to show I do have two books if you're interested the modern homestead garden this is my first book and this is my second book growing an edible landscape this is more focused on complete vegetable gardening this covers some vegetable gardening but also talks about changing your landscape into an edible landscape and you can find them anywhere that you can buy books online Kristen, how long should I keep my asparagus indoors? They just germinated today. So the asparagus, you're not going to do anything with for the first year anyway. So I wait until they're pretty big and you have nice roots. You don't need to get them outside. You could keep them inside eight weeks, 12 weeks, 16 weeks. As long as they're growing, they're going to form these beautiful roots. And then when the soil temperature is right, you know, just put them out there and let, let them do their thing and forget about them. All right, I built a huge raised bed three foot high around my patio. What would be the best way to fill it? Threw in all last year's plants, cardboard food scraps. Thinking to fill it with wood first. Yeah, so I have videos on it, um, just filling large raised beds. I do the one third, you know, it's three feet. Bottom third could be pieces of firewood, branches, whatever. 
any cheap stuff leaves. By doing that though, when it's filled, it's gonna settle. So you're gonna have to add more, you know, next year. But that's basically just stuff that's gonna rot. Then you can put in like your trimmings from around your house, earth trimmings when you're fixing up beds, cheap topsoil from bag stores or whatever, you know, from stores that are in bags. It's really the top eight to 12 inches. You want it to be nice stuff, like a blend of peat moss, your earth and compost. So you can save my money. You can save money by just concentrating the eight to 12 inches up top as it being better stuff. Onions are ready to separate them from the bunches really somewhere between, I think, eight and 10 weeks. All right, I think we're gonna end there. And just remember, I do the perk memberships, which is this format, but I do it four or five times a week or four or five times a month. You get two live classes and we do a Grow As We Grow series. The public Q&A, which we're doing now, I do every second Thursday and fourth Thursday at 11 a.m. You guys have a great week. 